In this lesson, we are going to learn how to find the volume of irregular figures. Now, we know that the first step to separate an irregular shape to find the area is the same for finding the volume of an irregular three-dimensional figure, such as the one we see here. And that first step would be to separate that irregular figure into two or into multiple rectangular prisms. Now right away we can see an easy spot or a couple easy spots to separate this figure. You could separate this figure here so then you would have one rectangular prism there and you would have one rectangular prism here. Another way you could do it is you could separate this figure here so you have one rectangular prism here and one rectangular prism here. Now since we know the formula for f finding the volume of a rectangular prism, we are going to split this into two separate places and we're going to keep it split right here. Now we're going to first find the volume of the lower or bottom rectangular prism. But before we do that, let's look at equivalent sides or equivalent corners and angles that we have in our irregular figure or in our two rectangular prisms so far. Now let's start with our lengths. The lengths are usually the long sides of a rectangular prism. And we see the bottom is 80 millimeters long. That is the length of this section of the base. Now, we know that if this is 80 millimeters long, then also this top section from here all the way to here is 80 millimeters long. Okay, now let's look at what else we can learn from our cookie loos that we have. Um, we know that this is 60 millimeters long here. That's this section from here all the way to here. Now, if this is 60 millimeters long, we know also that this section is 60 millimeters long right across from it. And now we can use this 60 and this 80 millimeters, our two length clues, to find what this leftover section is here. We'll get to that later. Now let's look at our width clues. Well, we only have one clue that's telling us the width, and it's the 10, 10 millimeter excuse me, 10 millimeters right here. This 10 millimeters tells us this is 10 millimeters. And we know that from seeing that this is 10 millimeters that all of our other widths are equal, 10 millimeters. Because our whole rectangular prism and the whole irregular figure is all the same width. Let's see what other clues we have. Okay, now we have a couple height clues. First, we see 40 millimeters is the section from here all the way to here. Now, that's not telling us the height of the whole irregular figure, but that's telling us from this, from the two red dots that we just made. So from seeing the height of this section, we can see that this is the same height. And we would know that from here all the way down to here is also 40 millimeters. Our other height clue is the 60 millimeters. Now this is this whole side on the left here. So since this section is 60 millimeters, we could also know that 60 millimeters goes from here and then all the way down to here as well. So the height of this whole irregular figure is 60 millimeters. Now let's go back to finding the volume now that we've looked at our clues and our dimensions that are already given, let's find the volume of each of our rec rectangular prisms and let's use the dimensions that were given to find our sections of our formula or our different variables in our formula. Now if we need to find some dimensions that aren't given, we know what clues we can use to find those. So let's start on the bottom. We're starting with our bottom rectangular prism and our formula for volume is volume equals length 
times width, which are both the area of the base when we found that, and we're going to multiply that area of the base, or the length times width, times our height. Okay. Now we're filling out this formula for the bottom rectangular prism again. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the length, width, and height that we have from the bottom rectangular prism. So the length, we've already said, length of this whole rectangular prism is 80. We know it's 80 millimeters. We're not going to put our unit in yet. Our width, well, our width here is 10 millimeters. That's this section. So we're already given our width as well. Our width is 10. Now, our height, let's see. I'm looking at the height of these, and I don't see any dimension given to me yet. Okay, so I need to look at my clues to find what the height is of this bottom rectangular prism. So since I'm looking for the height, I'm going to look at all the height clues or all the height dimensions that they give me in this whole figure. Okay, 60 millimeters is one height clue, and 40 millimeters is the other height clue. Now, 60, what does that tell me? Well, it tells me that this whole section from the very top of the figure here to the very bottom of the figure is 60. That's not going to give me my exact answer for just this height that we're looking for for the bottom. So let's maybe use the other height clue. Well, that 40, well, that's telling me the other rectangular prism is 40. Well, like we said before, we know that, that if this is 40, then this is 40 as well. And then from here all the way down to here is 40. Well, if we use our two height clues, we know that the whole left side of this is 60 millimeters. But just from here to here is 40, we need to find the difference to find what from here to here is for just our height of our bottom rectangular prism. The difference of 60 and 40 is 20. So we can then plug in our height to our, our volume formula. Now we have all the dimensions we need to find the volume of the bottom rectangular prism. Let's start with our first multiplication problem. 80 times 10 is 800. You can look at your simple problem, 8 times 1, and add your two zeros on to find 800. Now we still have to multiply our height. We found the area of the base, which is 800. Now let's find the volume by multiplying your volume of the base, your area of the base, rather, times your height. 800 times 20. Well, our simple problem is 8 times 2. That would be 16. Let's add our three zeros on. 16,000 cubic millimeters, or 16,000 millimeters cubed, is the volume of the base, or of the bottom rectangular prism. Now, we need to find what our top rectangular prism is. Again, since we found the volume of this bottom rectangular prism, we're going to write that in here. We said it was 16,000 millimeters cubed, or 16,000 cubic millimeters. Okay, now let's just look at the top rectangular prism now, the one we haven't found the area for yet. I'm going to write my formula again. Volume equals length times width times height. Now let's start with our formula again. Let's plug in the dimensions. What's the length? Well, the length is usually this section here. Um, it's one side of your base. So we're going to say this side's the length. Now let's look at all my length clues. My length clues are 80 millimeters and 60 millimeters. Well, 60 is only from here to here, and 80 is this whole side. So we know just to find this small section here, we have to find the difference of the two, and the difference of the two, 60 and 80, would be 20. Again, we just found the difference of 80 and 60 to find what this small length or part of our base is for our top rectangular prism. Okay, now let's find the other section of the base would be here. We're going to say that that's our width. Now remember the length and width are always the two sides of the base. As long as you remember 
the length and width is the base, it will not matter which side you decide to make your length and which side you decide to make your width. Well, where are my width clues to help me find this section? We're only given one width clue, and that's this here that we talked about in the beginning. That's 10 millimeters, and we said that if that was 10 millimeters on just this side, then every other width would be equal to 10 millimeters. So we know this is 20 now. We know this is 10. So I'm going to plug my 10 into the width section of my formula. Now the only dimension we have to find left is the height. And remember, we're talking about the height of this section here. Now we know since this is 40 millimeters, that tells us that this from here to here is 40 millimeters. So we know our height that's already given to us, 40. Now we need to solve to find the volume. Now let's look at our first multiplication problem, 20 times 10. Well, the simple problem is 2 times 1, then we add our zeros in, and the answer here is 200. We still need to multiply that area of our base times our height to find the volume. 200 times 40, well, our simple problem is 2 times 4, that would be 8, and let's add in our three zeros. And the volume of our second rectangular prism, or our top rectangular prism, is 8. Thousand, and I'm going to put my unit here, millimeters cubed, or 8,000 cubic millimeters. Now, just to clear this out to get us a little bit more space so we can see it a little bit neater. Now we've found that 16,000 cubic millimeters is the area of our bottom rectangular prism. And we found that 8,000 cubic millimeters, or millimeters cubed, is the area, or rather, I'm sorry, the volume of our top rectangular prism. We need to find the total of our whole irregular figure. Now, the signal word that I used there was total. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our 16,000 to our 8,000 to find the total volume of our regular figure. And since they're both in the thousands place, we can just add our 16 plus 8, 24. And remember, we're talking about numbers in the thousands, so I'm going to add my three zeros from placeholders in there. Millimeters cubed. So the volume of our whole irregular figure is 24,000 millimeters cubed, or cubic millimeters. Now remember, a couple of the key things. Whenever you're looking for clues to find the width of something, look for all the dimensions you're given of width to help you find that unknown dimension. Whenever you're looking for an unknown dimension that it deals with height, look for all of your height clues to help you find that unknown dimension. Same with length. Look at all of your length clues to help you find any unknown dimension about length. Think about if one length is given, what can that tell me about the rest of the lengths? Same with widths and heights. Always use your unit at the end and always use your exponent. Remember, three means you're finding the volume. It's a three-dimensional object. If you use an exponent two, that means you found the area and you're talking about a flat or two-dimensional shape. At the very end, if you found the volume of the two separate rectangular prisms, add them together to find the total volume of your entire irregular figure.